My name is uh, Rabia Nassar. Uh, I'm the CEO of Element N. Uh, we're a tech venture based out of Beirut and New York City. We provide a range of uh, vertical solutions for mainly for the telco industry and also other industries. But I'm here today to, to speak about Abstrata. Abstrata is our uh, cloud platform. Um, first, why we why did we decide to, uh, to create a platform? When we started the company, we figured, you know, maybe we can do things different so we can uh, execute our projects or create our solutions faster. By the way, can you hear me? Because yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can uh, execute our uh, uh, projects faster, create our solutions faster, faster time to market, and faster development time, less problems means higher margins. So we figured, you know, is there something based on our experience then we could that we could do uh, on the, the platforms and tools that we use that could make this more efficient, that could make developing solutions more efficient. And uh, you know, the, 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 first thing that, that <coughs> the first thing that jumps, uh, you know, th that, you can, uh, that, that you can notice when creating a web application, not a prototype, prototyping is important, but to take an application to production, is the number, the sheer number of moving parts involved. There are a lot of moving parts involved in uh, launching an app into a production mode. And uh, so we looked at these moving parts and we figured, you know, is there something we could do? Can we reduce those moving parts? Can we take some of the moving parts and make them work differently, uh, make them work better for the use cases that we have? So that was the, that was the original idea behind our platform. And we created it uh, in 2002 but it was an enterprise platform. We used to sell it as a licensed, uh, you know, as a licensed product. And then later, later on with the cloud, we decided to move it in the cloud. So, we have a, so our current product, Abstrata, is a platform as a service. I figured I'd use a, <coughs> I'd use a, ma I'd use a mascot. For, uh, you know, Woody is known in his movies uh, for the, he likes to deconstruct characters. So you, you deconstruct something so you could reconstruct it again the way you want. For those of you who are not familiar with, the, with Woody Allen's movies, uh, think of this as an aging developer. He's young, but he's had to face too many deadlines in the past few years, and uh, this is what it did to him. Or think of him as a developer from the time of COBOL uh, uh, and punch cards. And punch cards. Uh, so deconstructing the web application environment, I, so I could understand from the previous slide that that, that did not work. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Everybody's sleeping. Are you interested? <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, uh, so de deconstructing the, the, the web application, you know, there are layers involved to bring a, a, a production app, an app into production into the hands of, uh, of users. And these layers start from the, the basis is the data center. Then we go into the you know, data center that provides the capacity, the bandwidth, and then you know, the, the, the physical space to deploy the service, storage. Then we move higher, we get into the software layer, we have the database servers, caching, application servers, web servers, etc. I did not name everything here. And then uh, we get into the developer realm, which I marked in green. The developer realm is where the developer writes code. Uh, the other stuff is what uh, is deployment, is runtime, is administration, is systems management. And, so, and, the, and the developer realm where the developer has to implement the rendering logic, navigation logic, business logic, security logic, integrate all these different types of uh, you know, uh, moving part, moving component, I mean, I call them moving part, that implement the logic of the application that extends sometimes to the realm of the device of the application. So if we're talking about Facebook, there's a lot of Facebook code in the browser as much as, I mean, and, and of course there's the platform. And all, all modern web applications are like that uh, but, uh, also. And if we think about mobile devices, so the app is really split between a, a rich client and, uh, and, and, the, uh, and the server services and the back-end services. Uh, just to be, before, I start, before I talk about what we offer in terms of cloud computing, I figured I'd just put it into perspective with you know, the mainstream cloud computing offers in the market. So if we look at Amazon Web Services, Amazon is mostly about capacity. They, uh, th they foray a little bit into the, uh, the application infrastructure. They have a database and queue and stuff like that. But mostly, Amazon is about virtual capacity on demand. That's, what the, that's the innovation they brought. 
uh, and this is this is the, their main co contribution to cloud economics. Now I could, and by the way, we our platform is hosted on Amazon. So, uh, so now if I if I wanted to host an application, I can go to Amazon, use their web services to provision servers. That's that's what they offer. If we um, Google took a step further, Google made an abstraction of the entire application environment of the uh, of the uh, application container of the application server. Uh, Microsoft went even further. They did. It's hard to understand what they're doing. It, it keeps changing. And they keep adding products, but they're, they're, they seem to me to be everywhere and uh, and moving into the application realm itself. For example, they have a security service that allows uh, developers to to abstract their security rules, etc. So, I mean, we see the direction is is this way, like going higher and higher in the application stack. Uh, but you know, if we if we look at all these mainstream uh, 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 platforms, they have not attacked yet the the realm of the developer. This is where the developer lives. This is what developers do. They they either create uh, you know piping data piping logic that will carry data from the database into the application, security, all these things. They work. This is where developers work, and this is where we decided. To uh, you know, to spend our efforts. This is where we, what this is where we decided to investigate to see if we can provide this, provide metaphors, provide uh, paradigms that can accelerate development, that can make things simpler, faster, cheaper, all that. So, uh, if we if we look at this uh, from a, I mean just from another perspective, uh, that that. Developer realm. At the end of the day, what developer, what developers implement in 90, I don't know. At least in my case, it's 99% of the apps we've had to develop in my company for the past eight years. And I don't know in your case, but I'd say easily 90% of the stuff that we do, the functional services that we end up building in our server code are these. You know, we do user experience management. We we do persistence. Reporting, you know, mining of the data, presenting it back to the customer, media management now with uh, with uh, you know, managing videos or other multimedia assets, messaging, social network integration, and other third-party integration. So at the end of the day, all all that we're doing is implementing these functional services and the and the user experience part, depending on the platform we're using. If it's a mobile app or it's a web app, etc. Again, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a few slides on this just to make sure that the idea has uh, gone through. So this is another view of it. If you look at, you know, this is the, uh, this, web, this web stack has lived for us now since I'd say 95. You know, the three tiers and multi-tiers and all that. This, this kind of architecture has been around for a long time. We start with the database and file system for storing assets, for storing uh, media files or digital assets. We have an application server, whatever it is, Java, PHP, all that, TGI, Perl. Uh, and then we have our, the application layer, the business logic. And <coughs> initially, here we had a, what we called a thin, uh, thin client. The browser was intended to be as a, uh, 10 minutes, two minutes, two minutes left and I, uh, that's it? They're not giving me time today. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so this is the thin client. Uh, the thin client, uh, I mean, originally it was intended to be a thin client, and originally it was intended for all the logic to be here. Everything from rendering uh, the page, from generating the HTML that made an app look the way it looks, to uh, embodying all the complex business logic and, and talking to the database servers and the security and all that. Now, what, uh, if we put the cloud perspective into that, into that we see that uh, what, what the cloud has provided is provided services here, you know, the, the auto-provisioning, the, 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 the mainly the capacity. But not much has happened, not much has happened yet here. So to explain this better, uh, let's, let's, let's illustrate this. Suppose I'm, I need to develop uh, a blog, okay? So the blog, I have a form, it has two or three fields. And I need to present that to the to the end uh, to the publisher, and the data needs to come all the way from here to here and then come back. So if I look at that blog, I'll call this <coughs> blog form as my business object. 
This business object, today with the techniques that we use, the frameworks, the platforms, the, the patterns, all that, this business object lives everywhere. I'll have a schema to describe the business object and maybe some validation rules in the database. Sometimes I have to think about my scaling strategy, how, you know, so I'm not deploying a prototype here again. I'm, I'm deploying a, a production application. So how would this scale? How would I do my load balancing or my sharding or whatever it is that I'm doing? Then I have to write code here that will do the mapping of the data to the user experience. And here I have also, again, code that will translate this data into HTML to be viewed here. So if I look at my business object, it's everywhere. And that creates complexity. This is the problem. This is the problem that we, we, we thought about at the beginning. It, you know, the more complexity you introduce, the more layers you introduce, the more technologies you have to use, the more expensive it is. Because when you take the simplest of apps, you have to deploy it. You have to think of the different layers that will make it in all these, uh, you know, in, in all these layers. The problem also is not only the initial creation, because there, you know, in the past years there have been a multitude of methodologies, of techniques, etc., frameworks that simplify this. But think also maintainability and evolvability. So I've created my, my blog that has three fields. What if I want to add an image? What if I want to add a business rule? What if I want to present it differently? Sometimes these decisions, even the smallest changes on, uh, on the code, will we'll need, uh, we'll need to, you know, introducing code into all these layers, and mostly we'll need regression testing <coughs> everywhere. Sometimes revisiting the whole application model. This is where the, the, the long time to market for web apps comes from. This is where the cost comes from. So that, and that's, where, that's what we believed we could, uh, we could change a bit. So just to, uh, just to summarize, Actually, let's, uh, we don't need to. <laughs> so if we look at this, so the question that we asked ourselves is, what if, what if we could you know, really put a demarcation line between the front end, what the people, what, the, what is supposed to be in the hands of the users of an application, and the back end, and uh, provide those back end, back end functionalities as services. Uh, think of this, if you want an analogy to this, think of this as how people used to develop code in the 90s with client-server. You used to have the server and the client. Now that had its share of problems. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to uh, preach to going, going back into client-server. But the model was very simple. I create my forms, I create my user experience in one place, and my, and my data and my server logic is in, in another place. I have only two places to, uh, to deploy my app. I don't have uh, you know, a, a big number of, uh, of layers that can go wrong, I mean, where, where code can go wrong, where I need to do regression testing and all that. So, uh, so that's the initial question. And, and what, we ended up, uh, what we ended up providing, what Abstrata is, is, is the following. We have a collection of web services that allow you to do most of the functional, uh, that implement most of the functional services that I listed like a few slides before which include you know, content persistence, data persistence, digital asset management, user management, security, uh, real-time communication, messaging, third-party integration. All these things are implemented as web services. Web services that I can call through HTTP, and I can call them from any platform. But where we're really, you know, where we're really focusing up Strata, because we don't want to be the cloud for all platforms. We don't want to be the cloud for everything. Obviously, that's not going to work out. Uh, our model works best for rich client applications, you know. <coughs> uh, let's put these on the side for now. Let's look at uh, mobile, mobile platforms. If I want to uh, write a, an iPhone app today, I will still need to think about the, uh, the servers, a back end. You know, how will I persist my data? How will I query my data? How will I, uh, how will I save my objects? All these things, I have to implement a back end today. So that's an additional cost. You know, if, I, if I'm an Objective-C uh, developer, th and that's all I care about, and I want to create an app that sings and dance for my end user, I want to put all my effort, I want to put all the investment on the app itself, on what the app does, and I want a back end that just does the work for me. I don't want to 
worry about uh, load balancing and deploying servers and backing up and management and monitoring and all these things. If I had a service, you know, almost like email, that would, you know, I, would, I can call it simply and it would persist an object. I can call it simply and it would query the data for me, etc. So the same that I'm, uh, the same that can be said about rich client mobile uh, platforms can be said about browsers. Browsers today are rich client stacks. Browsers are not thin client sta uh, platforms anymore. You know, Facebook, Flickr, all the Web 2.0. After Web 2.0, we can write uh, all the user experience entirely. Can the user experience can be implemented in the browser? And the browser does AJAX, so it has the ability to communicate with back-end servers. So the same logic applies on the mobile devices and on, the, uh, on browsers to talk to the back-end. Uh, I mean, the same logic on the, uh, applies to both. And we can bring to both a, we believe, like an unprecedented degree of uh, flexibility in lowering the cost for implementing applications. Now, again, I don't say all applications. I'm not... We, for example, we don't, we don't preach our platforms to someone who's implementing an ERP. That's not, that's not where we want to go. But there are hundreds of thousands of applications that are created every month that uh, you know, do a simple thing. They, they take a picture. They, uh, they implement a simple blog-like functionality. They do content management. All these things can be implemented much simpler with, uh, with this approach and with our APIs because our APIs, our web services, have been created with that in mind. Uh, so, so the let's say the landscape would look like this. We have the a rich client application, whether in the in, in the browser or in a mobile device, and it would talk through HTTP to all our functional blocks. I wish I had more time to talk about that. Listen, I'm going to show you now just a simple example, simple code, like three slides, where I have code that implements a CRUD. You know, a CRUD create, read, update, and delete. Uh, so it shows you how to create data and Abstrata, how to query it, how to update it, how to delete it. So, and uh, Abstrata is a web service. We could talk to it using any language. What I chose here as an example is JavaScript because that's like the most simple. So you can write an app in one web page that can do a lot of stuff. And uh, maybe I'll show you that later. Anyway, so this is very simple. I create a connection. I provide it with, uh, with a key and a secret. That's, uh, that's like equivalent of username and password. And I do a save documents. Fields is the name value pairs of my fields that I want to save. Uh, of course, also, we can send, we can post an image or a rich uh, digital, uh, I mean, uh, digital asset. I'm not showing that now. We choose the database because when I have an account on Abstrata, I can open as many databases as I want where I want to do it. And I have load and error. If, this, if it succeeds, the code that's here gets executed. I decide what to do, show the user a success uh, message, do whatever it is. This is a query same story the query I say I want the action query I choose my database I put a SQL like where statement exactly like the the where statement in SQL I choose my fields like select fields comma separated list of fields that I'm interested to to extract we do pagination automatically on the server side because our target uh, cu customers are people that are writing web pages we give you also that flexibility by doing pagination on the server side so you say I want page one page two etc we can do full text search, so whatever you store, you can also, in, in addition to the SQL statement, send a full text search query. And this is when it succeeds, this is when it fails. And this is a delete, same story, delete document, and I, and I provide the key for the document, and it goes like that. Uh, what we offer is the following. We have a repository, it provides in contrast to a relational database, we provide a document-based storage model. It works better for web applications. We, we can talk about that in the QA if I have time. Uh, we handle digital assets. We handle media and files exactly like data. You can send them in, in, the, same, in the same requests. Uh, full text search, we have a full transactions. So transactions, you know, you can change, you can send changes over 100 documents and it either succeeds all or fails all. Uh, we do server-side validation. We, can, we have version control on the documents that you send to the database. We have uh, ACL-based security out of the box. Uh, we have, with the database, we have a server-side scripting engine where you can deploy scripts that can do uh, third-party integration, social network integration. You know, I can, I can provide a lot of examples around those. For those that are interested, just email me. 
I'll show my email at the end. And we do also messaging. So from your iPhone app, you can send email, you can send SMS, and we're implementing real-time communication. A little bit like what you see in Google Docs, you know, some pe people are working on, an, on a sheet and they can collaborate. So we have also a real-time API that we're offering in the, in the stack. If you're interested, please check developer.appstrata.com. You have all the resources here to open an account and download some test code and uh, you know, links to the documentation and all. Or send me an email. Thank you. If you have questions. No question? You can't have questions. So 